My name is Greg and welcome back to GK where we talk about all things that make you look over your shoulder when you're all by yourself. No matter how you feel about him, I think that we can all agree that Conor McGregor has more than secured his place in popular culture. People that could not care less about combat sports know exactly who he is. And while he's been on a bit of a losing streak lately, he's still the biggest name in mixed martial arts history by far. To be honest, it's tough for me to even imagine any other fighter beating his level of popularity anytime soon. I mean, the crowds that this guy is able to collect in some of his fights are absolutely mind-boggling. Now, while it's public knowledge that his image outside of the octagon hasn't exactly been squeaky clean, most people really have no idea of the type of characters that he's been associated with in the past. These are some of the most infamous gangsters in Ireland. I'm talking real deal cartel members. And if this is your first time hearing about this, well, have no fear. Just grab a cup of coffee, relax, and I'm going to tell you all about it right now. Oh, and if you enjoy these types of stories, then consider subscribing and liking because we post content like this every single weekend, blah, blah, blah. Let's just get into it, yeah? As I was watching, Conor McGregor perched up against the side of the octagon post UFC 264 with a broken ankle and literally threatening his opponent Dustin Poirier's life. I got to thinking back on another event from 2018. That time when Conor threw a metal dolly at the window of a bus carrying his then rival Habib Nurmagomedov. Specifically, I thought about this picture he took right before carrying the act out. Now, besides the totally awesome leather hitman gloves that Connor is wearing, the shot is significant for two more reasons. Jonathan and Andrew Murray, the two guys posing next to him. These are Connor's childhood friends, and they appear in a lot of pictures with him, going back to the early 2010s. They were also the ones to pick him up from jail after he was arrested for the Dali incident and share almost 70 criminal convictions between them. Mostly drug related, but some for violence as well. Jonathan in particular has served time for armed robbery and participated in a beatdown in 2012 that was dubbed sickening by the judge overseeing his case. You may be thinking, so what Greg? So Connor knows some thugs from his old neighborhood, you know? Who doesn't? Okay, well, I don't know what I did to you to have you aggressively question me like that. So I'm editing this video right now and I just noticed something. This looks like a booger. It's not a booger. I assure you, it's not a booger. It's a piece of dry skin. I really need to moisturize more, but it is not a booger. If it was a booger, I'd tell you, I promise. I promise I would tell you, it's not a booger. All right, all right, let's keep going. But the rabbit hole goes a lot deeper than that, actually, so just keep listening. About two weeks after Connor's arrest and subsequent release, the Drugs and Organized Crime Bureau, Ireland's version of the DEA, raided several properties in North Dublin connected to an organized crime group participating in an international drug smuggling operation, arresting six people and seizing 250,000 euro in cash in the process. That's almost $300,000. The leader of said group was reported to be a close associate of Andrew and Jonathan Murray, and the drugs used in the scheme were said to be supplied by the Kenahan cartel one of the two major criminal organizations in Ireland, led by Christy Kinahan and his son, Daniel. As you will soon see for yourself, Connor has publicly interacted and is reportedly friends with several members of this group. But before we get to that, we have to talk about the other major Irish syndicate. It's called the Hutch Gang, and it's led by Jerry Hutch 
who is a pretty well-known public figure in Ireland, having been accused of carrying out two of the biggest armed robberies in the country's history and also running a limousine service called Carry Anybody, acronym CAB, that catered to several celebrities, including Mike Tyson. And he absolutely hates the Kinahans. Here's why. The Kinahan cartel and the Hutch gang were once on good terms and often worked with one another. As a matter of fact, Jerry's nephew, Gary Hutch, was at one point known as Daniel Kinahan's closest associate. Ironically enough, this very thing would lead to an all-out war. Around 2014, several Kinahan drug shipments got intercepted and seized by authorities. This was rare for the gang, and they quickly deduced that someone within their circle was leaking information. The person deemed most likely to be the informant was Gary, due to being a relative newcomer. Because of his last name, he was not executed immediately, and an agreement was reached where his life would be spared. But he would be forbidden from engaging in any criminal activity in the future, and a member of the Hutch gang would have to take a bullet as retribution. In addition, 200,000 euro was to be paid directly to the Kinahan family as a show of good faith. Reportedly, Gary's brother Patrick volunteered for the punishment and was shot in the leg by Daniel Kinahan. In spite of that, Gary was still murdered in 2015. Freddie Thompson, known as Fat Freddie, Daniel Kinahan's right-hand man, was said to be responsible for the crime. As you may imagine, Jerry Hutch was not the type of person to let something like that slide. In order to better understand what happened next, I have to touch on the fact that Daniel Kinahan opened up a boxing gym with former professional boxer Matthew Macklin called Macklin's Gym Marbella, and later renamed to MTK Global. Over the years, the gym has turned into more of a promotional slash management companies and has been associated with some pretty big names in both boxing and MMA. For instance, Tyson Fury, also Darren Till, also Mickey Conlon, who you might remember from Conor McGregor's training camp when he was preparing for Floyd Mayweather, and also from flipping off the judges in the 2016 Olympic Games after losing a controversial decision. My point is, Daniel Kinahan owned this company, and that's the context for what happens next. On February 5th of 2016, at the Regency Hotel in Dublin, Macklin's Jim Marbella was overseeing the weigh-ins for a boxing event that they were promoting. This was where the Hutch gang struck back. Several gunmen showed up at the event and opened fire on the crowd. assumed intended target, Daniel Kinahan, had left before the shooting started, but an alleged lieutenant of the cartel and the cousin of Fat Freddy Thompson, David Byrne, was killed, and two others were wounded. Patrick Hutch was one of the trigger men and was dressed as a woman in order to hide his identity. Here is Byrne with Conor McGregor in 2015. The two trained together at the Crumlin Boxing Club in Dublin when they were younger and reportedly maintained a friendly relationship afterwards. The fighter who was supposed to headline the card, Jamie Cavanaugh, is also Connor's childhood friend. And his late father, Gerald, and Uncle Paul, whose funeral McGregor attended, were both members of the Kinahan Cartel. As of 2021, the Hutch Gang and the Kinahan Cartel are still believed to be a war with a large number of casualties, mostly on the Hutch side. Jerry Hutch has recently been arrested in connection with the Regency Hotel shooting. 
As far as Connor, it's difficult to pinpoint the extent of his involvement with the Kinahans, but he is regularly seen mingling with them. That is an undeniable fact. There was that big story in 2018 about him punching a member of the cartel and having a 900,000 euro bounty placed on his head. Floyd Mayweather even tweeted about it. In reality, the man he was alleged to have struck is actually a friend of McGregor's, and the two were seen partying together. His name is Graham the Wig Whalen, and he is a known associate of, you guessed it, the Kenahan Cartel. McGregor allegedly found the story amusing and tweeted things like this to stir the flames. You know, Connor has said some very questionable things throughout the years, like in 2016 when he allegedly threatened to stab another MMA fighter by the name of Gegard Mousasi. And of course, the bizarre verbal assault he went on against Habib Nurmagomedov and his manager Ali Abdulaziz, who, by the way, also have some very scary connections behind the scenes, but that's a story for a different time. What really got me thinking are the things that he said to Dustin Poirier in the Octagon back in July and then tweet it in the following weeks, it really seemed like he was insinuating that he could have something done to him or his family. And with the apparent connection that he seems to have to the largest crime syndicate in Ireland, maybe this isn't something that should just be brushed off. At the very least, they're not the most responsible statements to make publicly like that. But what do I know? I mean, Connor is a showman, and maybe this is, in fact, all in the name of entertainment. But this does bring our story to an end. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you did, I don't know, just, I, I hope you keep enjoying it. You know, I, I just hope you had, <laughs> I hope you had a good experience. And, uh, you know, if you have your own thoughts, don't be shy. Leave them in the comments down below. And as always, I will see you soon with more true crime, paranormal, and the mysterious.